Hello. In this video, I'm going to cover all of the basics to design, cut, and build cabinets using a CNC router. This will be kind of equal parts training and demonstration. First, we're going to jump into one of many cabinet software options out there, and then we'll take it over to the CNC, and I'm going to leave the entire video in unedited, so it'll give you a really good sense of what's involved on the software side to design cabinets for a CNC, and also just whether a CNC is going to work well for your shop. The software I'm going to be using today is called Cabinet Sense, and it's relatively new. I'm new to using it, but it's quickly becoming one of my favorite options out there because it's inexpensive, has great support, and a ton of customization. The CNC that we're going to be cutting this out on afterward is called the Laguna Smart Shop 2 SUV. And I think it's a fantastic option for small shops that are looking to do high volume production because it's fast, but the controller is actually very intuitive and easy to learn. All right, let's take a look at the software. So for today, I just want to do a base cabinet and an upper to kind of show you how this all works. I'm going to click wall and I'll draw a five foot wall. Now I can go in. Let's go to frameless and just kind of a default base cabinet. I'll drop it in and an upper cabinet. And you can see how they kind of align themselves both to each other and to the wall. Makes it really easy to start creating projects. Let's go in and start making some changes to this upper. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of these doors. And the next thing I want to do is split this into two shelves. So I can do that really easily by going to the cabinet sense menu and choosing fill. If I was using fill a lot in my projects, I could also assign a shortcut key so I don't have to go through the menus every time. Now let's put a door back on. But let's say that I want it to be one big door for the entire cabinet. So to make it a big door, I'm just going to drag this up and there we go. Now let's say I want to edit this in a lot more detail. I can open up the full list of options for this cabinet. I can start going in and making changes to the dimensions. Let's just round that out to an even 12. And I'm also going to go in to the dado depth and create a default of a quarter inch. So I'm not going to change this, but I do want to show you down here, we have all of our thicknesses for the parts of the cabinet. If we wanted to, we could go in and change these. But right now what I have is 23 30 seconds or the actual dimensions for my three quarter inch plywood. I have these set up in the project settings, which is very similar. It just applies defaults to all cabinets. So if there was something like, for instance, these dados, if I was going to do quarter inch all the time, I could set that up in my project settings and then save that as a template to use over and over again. So let's move on to this base cabinet. Uh, again, I'll start by just deleting this stuff so we have just kind of a empty shell. I'm going to go in here to the internal parts and you could see if we were doing a face frame cabinet, I'd have my rails and styles, but this is a frameless. So we just jump straight to partitions and shelves. I'm going to drag a shelf into this and then I actually want to make some changes to the shelf because I don't need it to go all the way back. I want this to be three drawers and I want these to be more like horizontal partitions. So let me go in here and I'm going to change the depth from full to partial and I'll assign it a, a depth of four inches from the front. As I'm doing this, I can also assign conformat screws on the left and right as my fastener strategy. Okay, so lastly, kind of the same as up above, I want to use that fill component to split this into three sections. 
Now I want to add some drawers. So I'm going to go into the drawers menu and I'll use this AccuRide system. These are some templates that came with uh, Cabinet Sense, but you could also add a lot of other systems, pretty much anything you want. So lastly, I want to change this cabinet, kind of the same way I did the upper. I'm going to make this 18, 34, and 24 even. Let's change the dado depth again to a quarter inch. And then in this case, I also want to take a look at this toe kick. You can see by default, we have a boxed toe kick, but we can change that to be an integrated one. So now it would be made out of one piece, and that really takes advantage of the precision that you get with a CNC router. Last thing I want to change here is just the toe kick dimensions. I didn't change these in the project settings, but I want them to just be kind of rounded out nice and even. And all right, so now we have essentially the cabinets that we want, but we haven't really delved into the cabinet construction yet. And one thing that I like to do for cabinets is make pretty much everything blind dados. It's one of the biggest advantages of having a CNC router is that you can use blind dados very easily. And what I really like is once you dial in the settings for your blind dado, uh, how much wiggle room you have, you can get it to basically be so snug that it locks in your 90 degree angles. And that makes building these cabinets so much easier. So what I'm going to do here is go into each of these components and change the construction strategy here to blind dado on the left and right side. Now this is going to take me a little bit, but if this was a cabinet strategy I was doing a lot, again, I could turn this into a template and apply it to my entire kitchen. And I could also turn this into a component that I can then go and drag in every single time for new projects. But it still doesn't take too long. Let me do the same thing for this upper. All right, so now we're all done here. One other kind of neat thing that I like about this program is I can actually turn on the uh, drill points and preview where all my holes will be. You can see it also has the uh, drill points for the AccuRide system already set up. And our design is now done. What we're going to do is export these cabinets. Uh, you can see we could also export the cut list, bill of materials. If we were cutting the doors or the drawers, we could also export those. Right now, I'm just going to do the basic CNC machine file. Give it a name. And I'll hit run. Now, I'm going to jump over to vCarve. All right, so in vCarve, I'm going to create a new document. 4 by 8 3 quarter inch. And I'm going to begin by importing my cabinet file. So this is what we've exported from the other program. I'm just going to change that thickness to be three quarter inch. I'm going to click OK here. And this is all of our pieces that we need. The next thing I want to do is assign toolpaths. So I'm going to go into Cabinet Sense Toolpath Checker. And I'm just going to assign some templates here. So for the drills, five millimeter drills. For the line profile, quarter inch. And for the fast cut, three eighths of an inch. It's automatically checking for any other tool paths that use those tools. And those are the only three tools that we're using for this project. So if I open up my tool path menu, uh, we have a lot of extra tool paths here that we don't need. So what I'm going to do is hit recalculate all. And it's going to run through them. 
These are the only ones that actually have toolpaths on them. So I'm going to right click, say delete all invisible. And we're left with just the toolpaths that we will actually be using to cut. The next thing I want to do is nest all these parts. So they're actually how I want them to be on a sheet. Just select everything, hit preview and hit OK. And you'll notice the toolpaths are no longer applied to the parts as they would be laid out on sheets. So Cabinet Sense also has a solution for that. We're going to go in here and say Cabinet Sense apply toolpaths. And now we have a set of toolpaths for sheet one and a set of toolpaths for sheet two. I can go in here and do a 3D preview really quickly. Let me just turn off sheet two. So we're just looking at the toolpaths for sheet one and preview visible toolpaths. So that will be one of our sheets. I'm just going to go to save toolpath. And I have visible toolpaths to one file selected. I can just click all of my sheet one toolpaths, hit save toolpaths, and save this out to my USB. So sheet one. I've already done, as you can see, I've already done this once. But let me go in here and I'll select my sheet two toolpaths. Again, save toolpaths. Sheet two. So we're all done here. We're ready to go cut. The last thing that I would say as far as software goes is if you thought that this process would work for you, if you like the workflow, SketchUp Pro has a 30 day free trial. Cabinet Sense has a two week free trial. And there's this section here. When you download uh, Cabinet Sense, you can actually check out their tutorials. They got video tutorials that are really comprehensive, a crazy long list of topics that are like ready to go and help you get started. So give it a shot. Try to build a kitchen. And when you get stuck, write down some notes. And then you can actually also book some one on one training time directly through the uh, Cabinet Sense plugin. All right, so that's my spiel about software. Let's go cut these cabinets out. All right, we got our two cabinets cut out. And as you can see, assembling these is just extremely easy. The blind dados just lock in those 90 degree angles. And on the software side, there's not a whole lot left to get from where we're leaving off right now to designing and cutting entire kitchens. So if you're a small cabinet shop looking for a CNC, you need two things. You need a controller that is just really easy to use and you need a lightning fast machine that is gonna keep up with your production goals. The SUV is that combination of features. So if you're interested in more information on the SUV or really any of our machines, you can check out our website. I put a link in the description, or you can always just give us a call. And thanks for watching.